All right, so we're going to talk about uh, pointillism, hatching, cross-hatching, and shading. So I just kind of quickly whipped up a, a little face here. Let's pretend that's my portrait. And let's say I'm going to go ahead and fold this, but for sake of ease of use here, I'm going to fold it kind of in fourths. So I get little quadrants, just like so. All right, so what I end up with is kind of my dude right here, and he's been creased. So again, I'm going to say that let's do, I don't know, Let's do um, pointillism over here. We'll do hatching. We'll do uh, cross hatching. And then, you know, shading would be down here. Now, I'm not going to bother showing you guys a demo on shading. You know how to shade. You can do it yourselves. Um, if you're using like a pencil or maybe a medium, you don't feel comfortable shading because we only really used charcoal before. Um, and remember that. Um, Pastel, chalk pastel works exactly the same way as charcoal. But if you're using like a regular pencil, maybe you kind of start by doing a little bit of this and then you just kind of smudge it around. I'm going to show you one really weird trick, but it works really, really well. So bear with me for a second. So let's say, whoa, okay, I'm upside down. Sorry. Hi. Ha ha. Hi, I'm here. Pretend I'm not upside down. Whoa. Whoa. It's like portal. Okay. So, <laughs> hello. So this is really stupid, but it works really well. Okay, well, oh my god, there's so many of me. I can say, oh, god, I'm losing so much hair. Okay, so here we go, right? Whenever you're shading, right, you're going to do something like this. Okay, so I'm going to get da, 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 da. Oh gosh, really blew that out there, didn't I? <clears throat> so I add on my lines, and you can see I'm just kind of adding on some lines here with my pencil. Okay. Now, if I want to start blending it out, but let's say whatever medium I'm using, maybe it's not pencil or maybe it's colored pencil, like it's just not smudging the way I want it to. What you can do, hello, can you see me? Hi. All right. What you can do, and this looks really stupid, bear with me because it works well. Take your finger or your thumb or whatever the heck you're smudging with, okay, and you're going to breathe on it. Okay. I know it sounds really weird. Hopefully you brushed your teeth today. You're going to breathe on it, but not like, I mean like, like you're a grandpa and you're wheezing, right? What you're going for, what you're going for is you're getting that really deep down hot air <coughs> like that. It's gross as hell, but what's happening is there's a lot of moisture that you can put by breathing on your finger and getting that hot, moist air, right? And you can get that onto your hand. So that whenever I go to start blending, that moisture really, whoa, really smooths out all of that stuff. Sorry, this is a little bit blown out here. Let's try to bring it back up. There you go. And you can see how really smooth all those lines get, right? By putting a little bit of moisture on my finger. Okay? So that's weird and creepy, and now your picture smells like your morning breath. But, but it works really, really well if you need to kind of blend in a pinch. Yeah. Yeah. Good? Okay. So that's that. All right, so next up, let's do, uh, let's do hatching. So I'm gonna use a pen, just because I wanna show you that it doesn't really matter if you're using pencil or pen or whatever. You wanna think about your mediums, right? It would make no sense to use pastel or charcoal, which is very <laughs> chalky. It'd make no sense to do that for hatching or cross-hatching, because as I'm doing it, it's just gonna blend and fuzz and defeat the point, right? So you wanna use something that's gonna give you a nice, crisp, fine line, like a pen. So for hatching, what I'm gonna do is this. There's a lot of different techniques you can do with hatching. Uh, I'm just going to show you one. You do what works for you, though. If this doesn't work for you, then obviously don't do it. So I'm going to stay within my folded square here. I'm going to go along, and I'm just going to apply, whoops, I'm going to apply kind of an even coat right across everything. Remember with hatching, we're using lines that are all going kind of in the same direction. Okay? So I've just applied an even coat overall, basically just saying that this is all one singular value, if you want to think about it that way. Now I'm going to go back over, same direction. This I'm going to kind of apply more where I want there to be shadow. They're going to be closer together. So I've added a little bit more underneath his chin. Now I'm bringing the chin forward and the neck backwards. Maybe his shirt is a little bit darker. So now I've got kind of his shirt and his chin right here are the same value, but his neck is a little bit lighter. That top lip is usually a little darker. Maybe he's got some shading right here. A little bit of shadow underneath his nose, like a weird Hitler stash. Right. A little under there. A couple little lines. Maybe there's some shadow underneath his chin. Okay, so now I've applied some shadowing, right? But at the same time, it's still kind of like I've got one value and I've got two values. I want to ump it a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and go back over. Same direction. 
This time my lines are even tighter together. Maybe give it like a collar or something. Like that. A little bit deeper shadow right there. Deeper shadow right there. So again, my lines get kind of tighter packed. But you can see very quickly, I can get some pretty good kind of value pops, right? Okay. So that's hatching. Cross hatching, the exact same thing. The only difference is instead of going in the same direction, we're going to crisscross all our lines all over the place. So it'll be something like this. So an even overall. I'm going to avoid the whites of his eyes because I want those to be pretty clean. Okay, kind of an overall. Then I'm going to go another direction here, crisscross my lines. Anything that's going to be slightly in shadow. So of course you need to know where your light source is coming from. Let's say it's here just for the sake of argument. A little bit of shadow underneath the <coughs> eyebrow there. A little bit of a bag, maybe. A little bit of detail on the iris. Crisscross my lines. Bless you. Again, I'm just going in different directions. Each time, just applying more and more ink to the page. And by doing that, I'm applying more and more value which gives things a lighter or darker effect. A little bit of shadow by the nose, maybe. So something like that. Okay. So again, hatching, shading, cross-hatching. So the last step then uh, that we didn't really talk about all that much is pointillism. So for pointillism, I'm going to switch over. I could do it in a pen. The problem with the pen is I'd have to sit there and make little dots. Like, so I do just tapping. You don't really see them. They're too tiny. So that's kind of weird. I'm going to switch over. I'm going to use a, a marker here. It's just a regular old Sharpie that I brought from home. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and basically just start kind of pointing everything together here. So just like we did for the cross hatching, just like we did for the hatching, I'm going to go through and give everything kind of an overall value. Just kind of all over the place. Kind of give them this weird chicken pox herpes thing. You know, glitter is a lot like the uh, herpes of the art room. Kind of gets everywhere and you never really get rid of it. Got to be careful with glitter. So this guy has now come down with a sick case of uh, facial herpes. It's not good for anyone. Um, so, we've given him an overall value. Same thing, I'm going to go back over top real quick and just start thinking about the shadowed areas. Anything that's a little bit shadowed. Maybe I want to give him a highlight on his forehead. So I'll kind of give him a little bit more light around kind of the edge here. Notice that I'm not really, I'm not doing lines, right? It's not a dotted line. I'm just kind of covering it. Like you would if you were using a colored pencil or anything else. I'm just kind of covering it. Only now I'm covering it in dots. I want his hair to be darker, so I'm applying more dots. Can't really erase these, so be careful. You can always go a little bit slower. Apply the uh, dots and value as you go along. Load it up for his eyebrow. A little bit in there for the eyeball. Some light for the iris. A little bit of shadow for the nose. And you end up with something kind of like that. Now, obviously not perfect. I would definitely take more time here to think about all of the shadows and really load it up there. Because even hair is going to have some shadows. But you get the general gist of things, right? The last thing I'm going to throw out to you guys is this. Let's say that as I'm going along, I'm doing my, uh, I'm doing my background. And let's say that my background is just red, right? So I'm coloring up, da, 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 da. Okay, so maybe I have a square that's in color, but then I hit this square in pen and I can't really color it. Now, yeah, I could go grab a red pen and you are welcome to do that. I'm not gonna stop you. Um, but instead, what I can think about is if this red was in black and white, if it was in grayscale, what value would it be? So the way you do that is kind of like how we do compare to measurement with our still life, do compare to measurement with color. So what I mean by that is this. 
take that red, right, and think to yourself, is that red, that color, is it darker or lighter than his shirt? And let's say that it's, uh, I don't know, lighter. And is that red darker or lighter than the shadow on his neck? Uh, it's definitely lighter. Is it darker or lighter than, uh, say, his cheek? Well, that's darker than that. So then I come up here, and I'm kind of thinking about this value scale, right? I come up here, and I'm thinking, okay, so here's the value for his cheek, and I know that the red is darker than that, right? But I know that it's lighter than, like, the heavy shadow, right? So all I need to do is kind of go through, start off with something. So that would be, like, level one. I need to bring it to level two, at least. So we'll add on another cross real quick. Level two looks like the shadows here have three or four, so I can give it a little bit more, just kind of lightly, a little bit more. And that would be about the gray value of that red. Make sense? Kind of, sort of, maybe? If you guys have any questions about any of these techniques, cross-hatching, pointillism, um, hatching, or shading, um, stop me, talk to me. Um, but make sure that all four of these are present in your portrait at some point. Awesome? Coolio.